Hi there. Today we are going to answer the question, or maybe I should say you probably already know the answer to the question of, is it time to clear out your inbox? That would be your email inbox, by the way. Janice Russell here, and I'm actually going to start with a couple of statistics. And one reason why I am going to do that is because the second full week in June every year is email week. And that sort of strikes me as funny because it's not like it's the only week that we actually get email, um, nor does it mean that it will take only one week to get our email under control. Uh, but that being said, I thought it would be a good time to actually talk a little bit about email. Now I'm going to start with some statistics. I just looked them up. So these are within 2020, 2021. Um, and lest you think that there were more emails sent in 2020 because of COVID, um, that's actually not true. There's been an upward tre trend all along, um, and it actually wasn't that much higher than the previous year, so nothing to do with COVID. So I'm going to read them because I wouldn't uh, you know, know them off the top of my head. So worldwide in 2020, 300.4 billion with a B, emails were sent and received per day, which translates to more than 149,513 emails sent per minute. Boy, doesn't that sound a little overwhelming. I love this one. The average person has 1.75 email accounts. Now, I would love to know how to have just a 0.75 email account. Um, but anyway, interesting. I'm actually a little surprised it's not higher, but you know, that's good. Statistics show that 40 emails are sent per day by the average office worker. Notice I didn't say receive. We're going to get to that one, but talking about how many are sent, 40 average. And the last statistic for now is 121 business related emails are received each day by the average person. And uh, it's harder to find uh, email statistics for non business related, other than things like how many are sent and received worldwide. So if you are having an email issue at all, then I hope that you'll stay for the duration of my six tips. Now, the first one is to don't delete, but unsubscribe. Now, let me clarify that a little bit. I am not saying not to delete emails because we're definitely going to talk about deleting emails. I'm just talking about those emails from which you actually can unsubscribe. We tend to think that, oh, you know, I'll just, I don't really want it or need it, but I'll just delete it. The thing is, is it's still one other thing to do. So it is best to unsubscribe. And if you're unsure how to do that, uh, most email newsletters have an unsubscribe button at the bottom. Occasionally they'll have it at the top, but usually it's at the bottom. And all you do is click on it and unsubscribe. Now, for those of you going, oh, wait a minute, Wait a minute, I, I may need it. Yes, I have not looked at it in a couple of years, but I may need it. Have no fear, because if later on you decide that you want to re-sign up for the newsletter, you will be able to do so. So this is not a till death do part kind of decision. You can unsubscribe and then resubscribe later. I am sure that they will be happy to have you back on their list. The next one is file, don't print. And this may not apply to everyone, but I find that still there are a number of people that like to print out some, not all, but some of their emails. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, and I am not saying that there's not ever a time to print out one or maybe two emails. What I'm trying to discourage so that we can save the trees as well as save some time with actual filing of papers is the let me just print it out. OK, so just be a little bit cautious about that and only really print out when you need to. And otherwise, when I say file, I mean file the email into an email folder. Now, this may seem a little bit strange, but here's here's something we often don't think about. Pick up the phone. Now, I know that a lot of people, you know, when they think phone, they're thinking text or email. However, there are definitely times when Email is going back and forth, and honestly, it would just be quicker to pick up the phone and have a conversation because 
a lot can be mistranslated in an email, um, tone, wording, etc. So sometimes it really is quicker to pick up the phone. Now, if you are afraid that picking up the phone might lead to a longer conversation than answering the email, then maybe you want to set a timer or when you first contact a person say, hey, you know, uh, I just want to get this done quickly. So just have a couple of minutes here. Let's try to get this solved. So set that expectation of, yeah, we're not having a 30 minute conversation here. We're just trying to get to the nugget of everything and not um, you know, not continue doing the email back and forth stuff. Now, obviously, if it's a group of people, that's, you know, you have to decide whether or not setting up some kind of a online meeting is, is worth it. Again, up to you, just something to think about. All right, so that's three. Don't delete, unsubscribe, file, don't print, and pick up the phone. Now, number four is decide now. So here's the thing about emails. Sometimes we make them a little more complicated than they are. And I have one person uh, who's joined us. Hi, Christine. Good to see you. I'm uh, glad you've joined for a minute or two here. So here's the thing. When you're doing emails, only a few decisions in terms of the broad decisions need to be made. Is this an email that I need to file? Is it an email I need to delete? Or is it an email that I need to take action on? Okay, now I realize that the action one is the one that tends to be the most complicated. So let's break that down a little bit. Sometimes the action is a brief action. It might be something like, oh, this is a meeting or an event and I need to put it on my calendar. So put it on your calendar and get it out of the inbox. Some people choose to delete it. Other people choose to actually have that whole email in their calendar entry. Um, me, I actually have a calendar folder. So once I put it in the calendar, I move it over there, but it's already been read. So it's not something I have to process again, just something I may need to refer back. Sometimes it, it gives you information that like reference kind of information. Maybe it's an address, either physical or email. It might have phone numbers, you know, whatever else. There is actual contact kind of information. So in which case, great, put it in your contacts and then delete it because it's in your contacts. Now, often, of course, it is project or task related. And here's what many people do is that they leave it in their inbox in order to remember that it's a task or a project. And I will say that for some people that works. However, it tends to only work when you don't have many emails in your inbox. It tends not to work when you have a lot of emails because then it's really easy to ignore those that have an action attached to them. So what, ends, what you end up needing to do, which I know is not an easy thing, and it's a whole different topic for a different Facebook Live, uh, but what you need to do is take that information and put it wherever you keep your project or task list. Again, different people do that different ways. And um, just for clarification for some people, a project is multiple tasks. A task is a really short thing, and that's often where we get confused. Again, a different topic altogether. However, you need to have a way to do that. If there's information in the email that you need for the project or task, you have to figure out what you're gonna do with that information. But just, I'm just trying to give you sort of some broad strokes for how to think of emails because oftentimes we just get so overwhelmed we forget, oh, there are some basic steps we can do. Or, oh, this is the information about a meeting. Let me just check my calendar. Oh, nope, can't go. Okay, I can delete it. Or, oh, that does sound good. Let me go to that. Etc. All right. Number five, we are going to designate. And by designate, I mean we're going to set up rules, labels, filters, depending on your email, uh, it the word changes. However, the basic thing about rules is, oh, you can decide that when something comes in, it goes here, whether it's from a person, uh, whether it's a certain topic, it can go places so that it's not in your inbox. 
So for example, um, actually quite a while back when I was serving on a board, uh, I had everything from the board go into a folder. And then every day I would process just that folder. Of course, some days there weren't anything in it. There wasn't anything in it, which was great. But that way I could just do that all at once and not have to sort of break my stride of whatever else I was doing. And there are plenty of others. Um, I know I have, I have some set up right now. However, the pro tip is don't set up too many because then you just have a lot of folders you need to look at. <laughs> so make sure that you are very discriminating about which ones you're going to set up rules for. And number six is have no fear. So here's the thing, for whatever reason, we think that if we delete the email, it is gone forever and always. And most email programs are set up to either delete after a certain number of days, 30 days, whatever. Some aren't set up to delete at all. Uh, so, but you, you can check and see, you may even be able to change the settings. But just remember that that, you know, the fear of, oh my goodness, if I delete it, it's poof, it's gone forever. Don't need to worry about that fear. So there you go. Don't delete, unsubscribe, file, don't print, pick up the phone, decide now, designate, and have no fear. So I would love to hear from you which of these, just one of these, you will try to implement within the next week in order to bring some clutter control to your email inbox. Thanks for joining. Let me know if you have any questions.